Today we're going to talk about working with transparent applications of paint with acrylic paints. And I want to talk about a little bit about what type of supplies you might need to begin with. If you're going to be doing an entire canvas, you're going to need a large tub in, in which to mix the paints. I like to also use these little individual bubble palettes so that I can put the individual colors in here and mix a lot at a time. I have some flow medium and this is available in many brands. And then I'm going to work with three different types of paint to show you how they mix a little bit differently. You're going to also need some high quality paper towel, a palette knife, and some quality brushes. I have already pre-mixed some flow medium. Um, the ratio is about two-thirds water to one-third flow medium. And I'm going to put a few drops of each covering the bottom of these little bubbles with the water. And the first paint that I'm going to work with is the Fluid Acrylics. You can use any brand. Um, these are always a pure pigment, so they're very intense. But they mix much easier with water, and so they will actually work just like a uh, watercolor would um, when you put them in this application. Also, when we're going to mix it, you can see how you have solid paint and you have um, the water. When you're mixing, you don't just mix a little bit like that because you can see there's still a big blob of solid paint and water. You have to mix it until it's completely changed so that you can no longer see the little individual um, clumps of paint. And what you want is to have completely transparent wash in here. Okay. The next type of paint I'm going to work with is a medium body paint. And DecoArt is one of the thicker paints um, in of bottled acrylics. So we're going to drop just a few drops in here. And that's where I always begin. Now that came out a rather big drop, so I'm going to just put two in. And you're going to see that it's going to take a lot longer to mix this. And I really believe that this is where a lot of my students have a hard time because they think that that's mixed. But I can see that there's still some clumps in there. So what will happen is if you're going to create a wash and there's still these little clumps of solid paint in there, you'll all of a sudden have a lot of blotchiness because the paint is not dissolved all the way. And the way I always test this is with an old brush. And so I come in and make sure that it's always dissolved. And you can see that there's still a lot in here. And the reason I use an old brush because it's going up into the ferrule. And that can dry very easily in your brush and ruin it. So if I'm already working with an older brush, then I know that um, I'm not going to ruin any of my new ones. But you can see now the difference that made, how much thicker this is than it was originally. And I can already tell that this color here is a lot more thick because I can see through to the lettering underneath there a lot easier with that than I can with this. So I will actually test it on a piece of paper before I use it to see which one I like better. There isn't an exact ratio that you can give people because every color you use is going to have a different uh, intensity of pigment in it. And so now the last one that we're going to do is going to be the heavy body acrylic. And it's going to be very hard to get a small drop. So I can tell already I'm going to have to add just a little bit more of this water mixture. And then once again, I will begin mixing with my palette knife. And you can see that it really does not want to mix that well. And so you can see that it's really a lot harder to mix because it's just a heavier body paint. So I'm going to get my brush. There was a little bit of pink in there. And it's changing the color. That's okay, this is just for demonstration reasons anyway. Now I do want that to be more of a 
green, so I'm going to just put a little bit more blue in here. And I can see that that's really thick, so I'm going to add some more water. So I'm going to come in now and I'm going to show you how to uh, essentially base coat or colorize individual items with these washes. So I, before I begin, I want to test these and make sure that the transparency is working. So I can see that that's really nice and transparent. I like that it has a nice coverage to it. I think it's just a little bit too yellow. So I'm going to just take a little bit of my pink and add it in there. And that's going to tone it down a little bit. once again, I have to mix these so it's completely mixed. Otherwise, what will happen is I'll go along and all of a sudden get some pink color. So let me make, go back over to my big brush. I'll mix this up really quick. Okay, that's looking good. So now let me test the, the color. That's really nice. It's a little bit duller, a little bit more golden, and I like that. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to test the pink. And notice that I'm blotting it on paper towel first. I find that if you go to a surface and you with a wash and you haven't blotted, it puddles. And you have way too much paint into your brush. But when you come and you just blot it, you have a nice transparent application of paint. And I'm really liking what I see there also. So now I'm going to test this color and this is a little bit dark. So I come in and I blot my brush. But I like what I'm seeing there too so we can go over to our surface. So this is pretty much like color book, book painting but there's two different ways that you can do it. The first way if you want to make sure that you control it and keep it nice and light, you can first dampen the surface very lightly with water. And what I did is I put water in my brush, then I came back and I blotted it. And then I came over to the surface to dampen it. Then I can come over, and again, every time I blot my brush, and I always set my brush down where I want the most concentration of paint. And I simply work it out. And I'm using a very small filbert brush, and I really like filbert brushes for doing this. Um, I also like my um, Monza Rounds that are in my dry brushing brush set that um, for doing this also because it makes nice, smooth, even um, applications of paint. Then when you come to the flower, you would do the same thing where I'm going to dampen it first. Only this time, I'm just going to dampen the outside edges. And I'm hoping to get a little bit of variation then. So when I come down here, it's just a little bit lighter. And then what I can do is, with that clean brush that I had, is I can just simply come in here and pull a little bit more out. And so I have some darkness, some highlight, and just a little bit of a metal tone right there. And I can continue that throughout the whole flower, and in seconds, create dimension. So I start by the dark half. Then I'm coming back and blotting my brush again, and then pulling it over here. 
and then I'll come over and remove just a little bit with my dry brushing brush. And I'll continue this way until it's completely So I lay in my dark color, flat my brush, meet it where it was, and then just pull out a little bit of the color. I'll start with my dark color and pull it out after I pull out it. And then take a little bit away. So start with my dark color, flat my brush, come back and meet it, and then with my clean brush, just fade it away. somewhat of a, di a dimension of flower started already. Now obviously when it dries I'll go back and reinforce it and build it up. But the berries would be very easy to do too is because you can just come in and fill those in. And you have to make sure you blot your brush. If you come in and you don't blot your brush you've got all this water to deal with. And even though it's much darker in coverage, it will leave an uneven application. So if that, if you forget to blot your brush, you can just come in with a small paper towel, blot, lift, and then continue on. Now I'm going to go into the yellow and just fill in the centers. So essentially, that's how you would begin this. And then I would go on and fill in the entire design in the same manner. Now something similar um, is when you go in and you apply a wash over an object that's already been undercoated. In that case, this is an apple that's been undercoated with a golden color. And I want to come in and I want to tint it a little bit red. Now I have mixed the red with my flow medium. And I think that because red's fairly transparent, I will be fine as far as putting it down without any streaking, because that's our goal, is to not have any streaking. But what we can also do is we can take this mixture of water, and I load my brush, and then I blot it, always remembering to blot it. and then I'm going to go over the entire surface. I just want this barely dampened. I don't want it really wet. I don't want to have any puddles on it. And I do try to stay within the apple because if I go outside the edges that the actual wash might bleed out. Or... And now I'm going to go into my red paint. I'll load it and blot it and try not to splatter it on my surface. And then I'm going to come in and you can see that this is very, very light because I'm just putting a tint over the entire surface of the apple. You have to work quickly. And notice how I start at the top and work down. Periodically I blot my brush because I'm picking up the moisture from the surface that I had originally dampened it with. But you can see there's absolutely no streaking in here at all. And I'll just very lightly go over the whole thing, make sure it's nice and smooth and even. 
And this is referred to as a veil, where you just put, and I completely changed the whole tone of the apple. Now what I want to do is I want to leave a little bit of an area where it's going to be a highlight. So I've got an old scruffy brush, and I'm just going to come in and pounce in here. It's kind of like using a mop brush. And I'm not sure if you can see how that's lifted it up a little bit. So we'll have just a really nice gradation of color to begin with as we create form to this apple. Now I want to show you how to cover an entire area um, with a wash. And this can be kind of tricky. So what I like to do is I like to first put a little bit of that m mixture onto the surface and pre-dampen it. And again, what we're trying to do is just make it a little bit damp so that we're going to be able to move our paint without getting any streaks. Because the larger area you work with, the harder it is to uh, apply a wash without streaking. Also, if you notice the size brush I'm using, obviously when you're working on something this big, you can go and swipe by over it a few times. I suppose if you were to come something with a brush this small, obviously you would get a lot of streaks with something small. I know that's kind of extreme, but um, this way you'll remember to use a bigger brush. So now I've already mixed a whole bunch in a old butter container and I've tested it. So I'm going to load my brush on both sides and then I will come over and blot it so I don't have too much paint. And I always start at the top and I very quickly work down. I reload. Notice how I'm swiping my brush and then I come back with my brush and a 30 degree angle and then that way I can continue going. And then I'm going to come in and softly wipe it. Very, very lightly I'm going over it to make it look nice and smooth and even. I can go both directions. But now I have to pretty I have to stop because if I continue doing this, I'm really gonna get a lot of streaks. I think that looks really wonderful. But I want to show you a little trick. Something I do that's really a lot of fun. If you want to create texture come in with just a little bit of rubbing alcohol while it's still wet. And isn't that a fun texture that it's creating? Just one of my fun ways to add interest to a design. Sometimes I'll just start and start with the background, do something like this and say, oh man, this kind of looks like an underwater colors, underwater theme now. And so maybe I'll do a, a fish or a turtle or something or a mermaid. Um, or maybe I want to do mixed media or just I like the background and so I'm going to just leave it, like, leave it like that to create interest. So lots of fun things you can do with these washes. Okay, now I'm back and I'm going to show you how to make a gradient background. I just created another background with the light blue like we had did before I sprayed it with alcohol. And now I've created some darker blue wash and hair. And so I'm going to dampen the top of the board with water. And this part is, does not have any water on it. 
Then I'm going to load my brush, blot it, and you can see that it's just fading away as it's hitting the water. Now I want it a little bit darker down there. So I'll load a little bit more in. So I want it a little bit darker down here, so I'm going to load just a little bit more in my brush. And I'm going to come in with a, another brush really quick that's wet and just get rid of this line where the two met. And I can go back and forth. You can see I'm having to work a little bit more because this is a much smaller brush. But I want to make sure that I have a nice gradation here. I'll bring my big brush back. Make sure I blot it all the way. And I'm just using ever so light of a touch as I go back and forth. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I have light, medium, and dark. And then if I need to, because it's just a little bit un uneven here, but it's starting to dry, what I will, would do is if I wanted to build that up again, I would dry it. So let me do that and I'll be back. I'm going to put another application of color on here. And this time, I'm going to pretty much just stay in the bottom area. Then I'll rinse my brush out. and just use clear water to blend it away. So that you can see how it built up. So we have light, medium, and a dark value. And that's how you create a gradient background using washes. So I've showed you how you can base coat an entire area with washes. And now we need to discuss how you might approach shading or highlighting or adding interest with uh, a transparent application of paint. So you can see I have two puddles of paint here. One is opaque and the other one has water on it. If I were to try to side load with this, eventually it would just go through the whole brush. So you can't side load with wash color very easily. What I prefer to do is called glazing. And I side load my brush with opaque paint. Then I work it into my brush until it's completely transparent. So then when I come over to my surface, I have this nice application of transparent paint. So what would you use this transparent glaze for? Well, when I'm glazing, I use it to add depth, to add interest, to create accents. So in the case of the snow owl, he was all white here, and so what I did is I just came in and I glazed the darker blue colors until I created the nice dimension that I have in him and came in all these little darker areas and with lots and lots of layers of glazing. Then in this pear design, these red areas here could be glazed in also. You simply take your paint, work it in until it's completely transparent, and then you come in and do a curved back-to-back -back float, but the application of paint is transparent. You can also use it easily against the edge. 
um, all these dark areas in here, I would come in with a really dark color and um, glaze in those to add more depth and more interest. Here I'd come in with like a black green color and, and add the interest and the depth there. So I hope you've learned a lot about using transparent applications of paint using acrylics and that there's many approaches to it, but some of the keys are making sure that you've mixed your paint thoroughly, blotting your brush so that you do not have too much moisture and therefore can't control it, and then also knowing exactly how to apply it using different sized brushes. I hope you're enjoying this series on techniques for acrylic painting. Please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. And also, please leave a comment for me. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.